wanted to ask you as well about the uh, some of the San Miguel teams you played on, the some of the great players, Grand Slam team. Who 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 are some of the guys that were on that on that team? Oh, we were we were stacked. <laughs> I mean, we were really stacked. Well, start start at the top, Mon Fernandez. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, arguably the greatest player ever in the PBA. I'm sure Jumar Fajardo would have something to say about that, <laughs> considering the way he's going right now. But um, Ramon Fernandez probably led the league in everything. He led the league in steals. He led the league in assists. He led the league in rebounds. He led the league in scoring, block shots. At some point in his career, he led the league in almost every category. In addition to that, you know, he's a little bit taller than me, I think. And he's a legit 6'5", I'm about 6'4 okay. and a half. And um, he played like a guard. He wow. could bring the basketball up the court. He could rebound the ball and push it all the way and finish it. Um, he was very versatile the way he played. And even though he was quite slim, he was quite strong. You know, there were guys in those days who weren't really bulky, but they had hard bones. And when they hit you, you really felt it. And he was one of those guys. Uh, he and uh, Ivis Dignadisi, if you remember him from yep. before, um, he was another guy who was slim, but really had hard bones and a hard body whenever they played out there on the basketball court. And he was just a great player. You know, Mon came to us in 88. He was a player coach of the Pure Foods uh, Juicy Hot Dogs at that particular, tender Juicy Hot Dogs at that particular time. And uh, we traded Abigail Dobbin to Pure Foods for Mon Fernandez. And Mon and I had a lot of battles. Uh, I remember my, my first year going up against Mon. Um, we actually beat them. Teflon beat Toyota, if you can believe that. We beat them a couple of days before Christmas. And I might have had about 62, 26, something like that, 62 points, 26 rebounds. Whoa. And all I remember is Mon hitting me in my groin. I'll say my groin, <laughs> so I don't have to say the other name for it, but hitting me and then running down the court. And, you know, I wanted to kill him. You know, so that's how our relationship went for a few years until we traded for him in, in 1988. And I had to sit down with Mon when he arrived into the team and and say, hey, Mon, we're the same team now, so we're going to have to work together, win championships. And, and you know, he was very open to that idea. And, and the one thing I respected most about Mon is, you know, he had the elegant shot. He was El Presidente. He had all these monikers and names and things. But, boy, did he work in practice. Okay. I mean, all those things, the Keely Keely shot and all that, he actually worked on every day in practice. So it wasn't like it was just happening or some magical appearance the way – he was playing out there on the basketball court. No, he, he worked on his game, and that's why he was so good. In addition to him, wow, uh, Sam Boy Mim, the Skywalker. You know you have great teammates when they all have names, right? <laughs> uh, the Skywalker, um, fearless, um, probably one of the most athletic guys ever to play in the PBA in the history of the league. Uh, dunk on anybody, mm-hmm. would challenge anybody. The fans loved him. Outside of Sonny Jaworski, he was probably the most popular player in the league. And he was just a great teammate, a great person. Um, Hector Kama, the director, even had a name, the penetrator, the director. And a great point guard, one of the best point guards ever to play in the game. Um, the thing I loved about Hector was his toughness. I always tell, my, I always tell Becerra Mir this, uh, because when he first, um, first got into the league, Becerra was kind of um, shy, you know, not very yeah. aggressive. He was really afraid to take control of the team and command the veterans, even though he was the point guard. And I told him the story of Hector Kama, how he was the quietest guy on the team. But when he told you to do something, you better do it. Otherwise, he would get all up in your face. And that's the way Hector worked. You know, He was quiet. He was a good guy, good person. But at the same time, he was, I won't call him a killer, but he was deadly on the court. Yeah. And he was dead serious about what he was doing. Not to mention he was very efficient. He always shot at mid-50s and 60% from the floor. Didn't take a lot of shots, but he hit the ones he took. And he was a great playmaker, you know, a good assist guy. Uh, Ricardo Brown, um, Brown Fox. I mean, probably the best local scorer ever in the history of the league. I think um, his career average is number one. Um, well, he's right up there with Alan Ty Dick, I should say. But um, he was just a great player, a clutch player. And never missed foul shots, great three-point shooter, good rebounder for his size, good defender, strong body, uh, great teammate also. That's the good, the good thing about our teams, with the San Miguel teams, everybody was a good teammate. It wasn't about just winning. It was about caring for one another on the court and, and even off the court for that matter. And 
who else had such a great team back in those days? Alakai yeah, Dick was part of those teams. Otto Augustine was part of those Man. teams. Elma Reyes, Franz Pomarin, I mean, <laughs> Ibis Dignadise, Alvin Ting, who has a couple of sons who have played recently, second-generation players. Um, not to mention we had great imports. Um, Ray, Bobby Ray Parks, whose oh. son is also a star now, um, was um, the import when I won my first championship as a coach in the PBA. Uh, I went to the States and recruited him from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I actually flew Bobby Ray Parks to Los Angeles, and I flew into Los Angeles. I had a friend of mine, Bobby Reyes, mm -hmm. rent a gym in Los Angeles, and we got two other players to come over and try out, along with Bobby Ray Parks, but the other two players were from Los Angeles, and I knew after about two minutes I was going to sign Bobby <laughs> Ray Parks. That was a, that was a no-brainer. That was an easy one. And he helped me win my first championship in 1987 as a coach. And it just happened the following year, I was still a player. So um, I wanted to play again. It was 1988 first conference, and we didn't want to hold Bobby back. So we released him to Shell, where okay. he went and had a long career there. And I continued playing. Actually, that year, we actually beat Shell in the championship. Oh, man. Myself against Bobby Ray Parks in the third conference. So we had some great players. I mean... And not to mention the management. Management was very supportive. One thing I know about San Miguel, and I, you know, I try to tell my, my teams this now, but you know, most teams in the PBA, they budget for winning. Yeah. San Miguel budgets it for, they budget for is Grand Slams. <laughs> they don't budget for winning. They budget for Grand Slams. They want to win every conference. And it's that way now, and it was that way back in, in those days. Yeah. That, that is definitely one of the all-time legendary teams, one of the teams that I've heard a number of stories about. I've heard of all those players uh, that you just mentioned. So I, I just wanted to get your take on some of those so guys. So you're making me feel old because you heard. No, no. <laughs> you didn't That's, actually witness it. No, huh? but, you know, I never got to see Moan Fernandez play, yeah. so it's nice to hear that from you. I never saw Ricardo Brown play. I, I never saw Hector Calma play. Um, I, I saw Alan Kydick play briefly. Um, Samboy Lim, I didn't see him in his prime, so I always wonder about these guys. I would have loved well, to. Alan Kai Dick was, oof. I mean, I think he scored over 80 points in one game in the PBA. Uh, he was one of those guys where um, he probably could have worked a little bit harder on the defensive end, but on the offensive end, he was unstoppable. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't like he was taking you off the dribble. He was just shooting in your face, or he was posting you up. I mean, <laughs> Alan Kai Dick was probably one of the best post-up guards in the history of the league. I mean, wow. he could post up anybody. He had the little turnaround, left-handed shot, and well, Alan, they call, him, they call him the trigger man. So you just, <laughs> just go by the name, you know, he, he could really fire the basketball.